so sorry. It is, it is. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Just needed to make sure that this is being recorded. So like I said, everything's being recorded, so feel free to access it online as well. So before talking about anything, let me introduce myself formally. Who am I? Um, some people in Thailand might say I'm just that little kid in Thailand trying to dance. This was me when I was like six, seven years old. And then uh, some people know me as an artist and a designer for clothing, and other people just know me as an activist advocating for immigrants' rights as an undocumented um, individual myself. And I'll tell a little bit about my backstory about why I came to the U.S. Oh no, actually before that, I did an artist like conceptual idea of people who people think I am. I just spend most of my time hanging out with my little nephew and hanging out with some homies. But uh, why I moved to the U.S.? I moved to the U.S. to attend a quinceañera. I can't hear any laughter, but that's a joke. I actually moved here uh, when I was 13. Um, because there was a family situation within my family. I'm not going to go too much into details because it's personal to me. And pretty much I moved here. And then um, a year after that, my case was scammed by a lawyer and I just became undocumented and spent a my t most of my time working in my cousin restaurant, going to high school and trying to figure out how was I going to make it through in life without papers. And I faced a couple barriers in terms of getting a driver's license, getting a social security, and how to access higher education. And at that time, while doing all that, I started exploring art, you know, out of this anger, sadness, and being lost. But before talking about that, let me talk about purpose of art. So I think we all have different ideas of what art is for, but let's dig deep into uh, history and other artists and how they choose to portray art. So historically, art has been mostly been drawings of kings, queens, the Lord, you know, Jesus, different religious figures, and different portraits of white people in museum, aka Renaissance art. But until this artist named Vermeer, he drew this painting called The Girl with a Pearl Earring. So that was one of the earlier paintings that signified something that is not you know, like something that is more of everyday life, of ordinary, of just a people to people rather than all these things that was being glorified before that. So personally, I think art is, is a manifestation of idea or appreciation of our surrounding or people. But it is also a way to raise awareness and a way to push different ideologies and from that, I draw a lot of my inspiration from Banksy. Banksy is a street graffiti artist who make art to kind of like do on social commentation. And one of it is this uh, drawing right here of this guy who's supposed to be throwing a bomb, but instead he's throwing flowers, similarly to the idea of making love, not war kind of vibes. And then there's another artist named Pawel Kuczynski commenting on... Um, pollution and now how we kind of create this concept of nature when it's not really there no more, you know, with climate change happening. And yes, climate change is real. For those of you who don't agree with it, just look up online. And, um, and yeah, but I also want to highlight this art done by Julio Salgado, who's actually an undocumented artist uh, representing the LGBTQ community. So it's a play on the situation of uh, homeland security but instead it's homeland security and how it is always pushing out an, um, immigrants and creating barriers for folks to seek opportunity life no to seek a better life asylums and things as such and then it's just stayed a uh, come in girl so I thought that was powerful and um talking about art i think when i first approached art i thought to myself like I can't really draw, you know, I just have all these ideas inside of me, all these feelings, and I wasn't having um, a healthy habit, you know, trying to cope with different feelings in terms of like, oh, I can't 
go to school, I can't drive, I can't work, I can't support my family. I have family members in Thailand, some that have passed away, some that I haven't seen in years. Do, should I just stay in the US? Should I go back? Should I, what should I do? So while going through a lot of that, I was going through some depressions and anxiety. And one day I just, I thought to myself that I should probably find a way to channel it. And one of the ways I started doing that was through art. But there was another barrier for me, which is I can't really draw, you know. So I want to make an example of this drawing a house to your left, this beautiful house in um, suburbia America. <laughs> so um, I think for most people and for me, when I think of drawing, I thought like I need to draw something to make it look alike. But then I thought to myself, nah, not really, you know. Nowadays with an iPhone like this, if y'all can see it, this pink iPhone, you can just take a picture of a house. So there's no need to draw a perfect image. I don't, I think things have been different. And then if art is a manifestation of idea and appreciation of our surrounding and people or idea, it's about the content that matters. And it's also about how you portray those content within your capacity or within a way, whether that's intentional or not intentional, it would always be unique. So I'd rather prefer a house like this. So if I what to draw a house, it would be more of a crooked house. But then that would be my way of drawing a house. It would be unique to me of how I want to present an idea that I want to create in this physical world, in this physical space. And I encourage y'all to do the same. And end, what I'm trying to say is do you, boo. And on that, I want to talk about um, narratives and why it is important for us undocumented folks to really reflect and manifest all our stories, our emotion and ideas. Because currently, you know, there's always conversation about immigration. It's always going on in the news. Things are always happening. And oftentimes I feel like undocumented immigrants are pawns for politicians to move their agenda. Whether that be Democrats trying to find more votes or Republicans straight up just trying to oppress and discriminate against immigrants through hate and anti-immigrant sentiment. But out of all of that, it seems to have that there has been two main narratives that are being, that's been standing, which is the dreamer narrative of these young undocumented folks who came to the U.S. at a young age without their um, consent for because their family wants to bring them to a better life. These are young folks who had a dream, who wants to pursue higher education and push through. But with that, I think that's, that's, that's not a bad narrative at all. What it creates was that when you create a dreamers and you create this idea of good immigrants, you also create an idea of bad immigrants. Of these are the people who deserve to be here because they're good students, they're this and they're that, and they came here without their own um, agency. But what does that happen to our parents, the people who brought us here? They end up being vilified and thrown under the bus. And historically, I think we can see that, you know, with um, the happening of DACA, it also means that there's more raids and deportation that had happened because those are the compromises that are being done um, on the political level. So I think it's mindful to think about that. And the other thing is also like, when you do good immigrants, bad immigrants, like Donald Trump, they just straight up, he just straight up blame everything on immigrants. And just, you know, Im immigrants are just being kind of tied to this ideas of training resources and that, that America is changing and it's not gonna be white America no more, but just be a colorful America, which a lot of white supremacists doesn't want. So within all these narratives, I ask myself, where's the balance in humanity? Are all these narratives just a point uh, of um, something that is used by politicians to push their agenda or something that the media use to just sell stories? And from here, I also notice that there's a lot of sad stories and a lot of like very unrealistic, hopeful story of people who have, you know, like overcome everything in their life. And those are amazing, but I don't think it is balanced and is reflecting of our reality. Because like people, undocumented immigrants also comes in our shapes and forms. Having that said, I myself, 
for our being last in college my first year and you know just not having any sort of opportunities um because i didn't have the right type of paperwork i just find myself questioning myself why am i in college like should i just go home and help my family work in the restaurant or, you know raise my little nephew and uh while just walking around aimlessly one day i got an email from um the coordinator from the undocumented student group there asking me to come out and share my story to raise awareness and at that time i didn't really read the whole email and i thought we were going to share the stories within a small group of people with you know like five six seven undocumented folks so i just went out there and i i just i just showed up and i realized it wasn't to a small group but it was in front of 150 people in the middle of uh, the school I went to, which was UC Irvine. And then that was when I, I came out of the shadow, talk about my story, talk about myself. And from that moment, it was empowering in a sense that the whole undocumentedness was always seen as something negative to me, something that barred me from, you know, um, opportunities as my peers and barred me from going back home to see my family. And uh, from there, I just kind of hop on to different activism thing, just to kind of like convert my negatives to positive, and that was empowering. So uh, from there, I went to MSNBC, I talk about DACA, DACA expansion, those were the things that I advocated for, and also like the Clean Dream Act. But um, while going through all that, there were a lot of feelings that have came to me. A lot of times I felt like I needed to share my story, and I needed to talk in a specific and particular way in order to push forward for the movement and to represent the API population. And one day I woke up and then I got tagged on a photo right here where they made a picture out of, uh, made a sign out of my face. And I actually did not know that um, that, that was gonna happen. <laughs> and I was probably the last person to find out. So um, that was when I realized that I no longer have control of my story. And that was something that didn't sit too well with me. So that's when I brought it back to um, thinking about personal narratives and to share my story in a more than one dimensional way and to control my story. And one of the things I thought was to do that through art. And you know, oftentimes, I don't know y'all have experienced this yet, but there's always gonna be academia and politician who write up on documentedness, but I just wanna hone in that at the end of the day, we are the expert of our stories, our experiences. And only us are the people who can really write and share our truth and show our humanity without, you know, being on this uh, media or political agenda. So from here, I want y'all to take a moment to answer a couple more questions to think about this, which was, uh, which are, what does undocumented means to you? How does that affect your identity and life? How is it being perceived by people you know and by people you didn't know? I'll give y'all uh, a minute or two minutes. And I'm asking, okay. And then I'm asking all this question in order for us all to reflect upon our truth and also as a material for us to write our own story, whether that be through poetry, through creative writing, through drawing, music, whatever form of art that y'all do or y'all want to get into. And I don't think there's anything that stops anybody from doing art because at the end of the day, it's just the essence of our truth and the portrayal of the way we can and we want to portray it. So having said that, those are the questions I asked myself as well. And from there, I wrote two poems that I want to share with y'all. One is called The Traveling Man. So it goes like this. I wrote this in 2016 when I was on the Metrolink bus. If y'all know Metrolink, what's up? Ironic, ain't it? To take a selfie, but still not know who the picture reflects. To live life artificially, not knowing if you're really free. Feeling mundane tasks as the body moves. Conflicting if time wasted is really waste. Of time sped up is haste making waste. Wordplay to understand the big picture, but still can't read a simple cracker. Is it wrong to be confused and lost, but happy? To walk many paths and just roam? But along the way, I lost my sense of home. And now I just feel like procrastinating life to enjoy this quote-unquote journey because I got nowhere to be. 
guess I'm just a traveling man with no destination. And that was something I wanted to, to really explain or show to people what I really felt being undocumented. I think it just goes even beyond just the everyday struggle, but the mental and the self-image that I have of myself and where I belong. And at that time, I didn't feel like I, I really belong anywhere. And yeah, so, and just, you know, just to clear this up, I started doing art and poetry, um, just mainly for self-expression and healing, just a way for me to meditate, sit with my thoughts and sit with my reality. And that had helped me. And then it wasn't until later that I started sharing all of these people. So none of this was really made with the intention to share initially. And then the other thing I wrote was the last bar with no vision. There was, this was more about, um, oh, okay. There was a typo on this because it got blended, but um, I have the poem on my phone, so I might just read it off my phone instead. And um, so this poem was actually written talking about how I went around sharing my story and how I felt after, you know, I just kind of always sharing my stories and then just putting that as the, my priority to just move forward the movement. And it goes like this, a lost boy with no vision, he marched with the crowd and got lost in his own pacing. Blurred by obstacles and self-disbelief, every time he speaks, he shares his whole life story old memories of pain and suffering, rewinding on the daily for an argument, proving his self-word defined by his struggles. From places to spaces, he was morphed by his very own word. Shaped in order to fit the narrative that best sold, he became an undocumented immigrant from Thailand with a quote-unquote dream, tokenized and used for the greater good, but that good trapped him in his own past. He lost himself by his very own word, the last bar with no vision. He marched with the crowd and got lost in his own thing. And that's another thing that I thought about. Every time I share my story, it's always about like, you know, like the sad things that had happened to me about anger and pain and fear. And I thought that was cool to spread, put the message across to show people how it really feels like. But for me to keep talking, keep talking about that, eventually I just got trapped in my own past and I thought it wasn't healthy for me. So this also brings me back to like, why I also want to do this in my own way. So this is an interactive thing. So I want y'all to um, let that sit in a bit and also now, um, you know, ask yourself these questions and please share everything in the comments if y'all want. So maybe y'all can have like a little conversation too for this part, I'll give you four minutes. The questions is in this, you know, with everything's happening, what do you stand for? What makes you wake up in the morning? What do you, you know, what do you believe? What are your values? What's your roots? Where do you think you're from? How do you hold on to that? And how has your life changed after your migration journey? Or how has your migration journey been? And what's your state of mind in this administration? I think these are important questions that we all should reflect on or share with one another. Because oftentimes within my uh, friends group as well, I think being undocumented sometimes could be, could feel lonely because we live in a world that not everybody are going through. So three more minutes, I'll give y'all a little bit more time and drink water meanwhile. Oh, by the way, as I um, present this, because it is full screen, I won't be able to see the, um, the comment section, but at the end of this, we'll have a Q&A. And then I, I assume, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to see all that comment. 
Okay. So is everybody done? Okay, so there's one more person. Also, um, shout out to Madeline. She's also helping uh, facilitating and managing um, the comment section. So to see like who's done, who's not. There's some comments. Okay, I'll try to do this. Okay, so I asked myself all the same questions as well. And um, this was the moment when I decided to um, create my first collection, if you may. And yeah, you know, I've been telling y'all I'm an artist, talking about artists, but I haven't really shown you any of my drawings. So it's coming up soon. But before that, you know, I like to do a little poetry. So I did this little writing, writing to kind of like, um, to create a theme for this collection. And the collection is called Be Conscious. It has like nine to 10 black and white pictures, but right here I'm just gonna put four in for the sake of time. So it goes like from the third world to the first world, my third eye opened up to this new world. New order of migrants and sheep labor, freedom of oppression, it's all a blur. And I think at that time, I was questioning a lot of people migrating to the U.S. for a better life, including me and my family, and to see the reality of how we're living and, you know, the conditions that immigrants go through and how harsh it is to work in a society. So one of the first drawings I made out of this collection is called Statue of What? And it's supposed to be the Statue of Liberty, if y'all can't tell created by bow tie. So, um, so yeah, so I'm really not the type to be able to draw things the way it is. So I just draw it in my own way instead. And then this, this was kind of like this, I made this drawing out of this question of like, what does this country stand for? To be the land of freedom and also land of oppression and to have this long history of, um, you know, slavery and sheep labor from different migrants grow, whether that be Chinese folk building the railroads, you know, and so on. You know, just every generation, I think that just kind of changed, you know, who are the migrants and the condition they are. Pretty much all immigrants are just the backbone of the U.S. creating the infrastructure. And we see that with farm workers, with every, every, everything. And then the second drawing I made out of that was called uh, Above Conformity. And it's just about like knowing your roots and you know, when the world like um, the mainstream society that I feel that I live in is just so American, right? About like what yeah, how should we live, you know, just to be get more success, get more money, buy a bunch of things, living in this consumerism, capitalistic society, um, where whiteness is attractive and whiteness is like what's valued you know like credentials you know you trust people if they're american and all that i think they don't value the knowledge that immigrants can bring to that this table or even uplift like a different culture and different you know like um beliefs and types of knowledge that we all bring onto the table so this was a drawing about that just being above conformity this is a head floating above the city where the roots come out and just knowing one's roots. And out of that too, I also made this drawing called Following the Light. And Following the Light is this drawing that says urbanization and it's talk, it's supposed to be a lamp. 
So you know when usually um, this flies flies toward the light and all that, but the light, the lamp is actually a trap. So that's kind of like how I saw city life as well, where people are attracted by this lamp light idea. People migrate, you can see people migrating here. There's these stick figures holding those little things. It's kind of like old school uh, bunny vibes. And, um, and it's just saying moon don't shine. So just people moving here, just hoping for a better life, but the city trapped them, the whole idea of concrete jungle. And one of the last one in the series is called a flame holder, and it kind of signified the U.S. in 2017, 2018-ish with Trump coming up. And it's just like this idea, like, you know, his, uh, the Statue of Liberty, she's still holding like the fire, and the fire acts kind of like the lamp where it attracts people in, but the fire is also lethal. So, you know, just the point of the U.S. being uh, a place where people will continue to come, but them holding a power that could also harm folks here with refugees and everybody moving, coming here, right here, say top of the pyramid, it's just money and uh, UFO, the UFO is just a stylistic thing. And I really like this idea of yin yang and duality because most of the time in my life with everything that had happened, I just tried to look at it in a way that it helped me, it helps me grow and it helps me become more compassionate and understanding about the world and without sadness i wouldn't appreciate happiness as much and without losses i wouldn't appreciate the things that i have so being undocumented had taught a lot of things to me and i tried to apply that idea of duality into my art and into my life from all that um you know i just want to really focus that most of my art and poetry has just been me drawing and creating it by myself you know like staying at home and doing all that just you know some could just say it's just me being simping playing some drake or lo-fi or all this music and just kind of there listening to j cole kendrick lamar just drawing writing processing all these feelings while being lost and that was just me reflecting and honing down on one story and for me, it's just kind of like, I try to think of how can I expand that to be bigger and how can we connect? And I think community is really key because we all have our own story of resilience, our story of growth. But then when we all come together, it becomes a story of us. I think it's such a beautiful thing to see the immigrant movement as well because um, it is almost to see the beauty in the struggle. I think being undocumented has given me a meaning to push forward and to see like, how messed up society in the world is, but also how strong we all are and how we all can move forward together, connect and come together. And um, I also want to hone down this idea of finding one's voice, whether how, however way people find it, some people find it in school, work, family, religion, but one of the way I found mine was through art and poetry and to put that in a bigger picture. And, um, Fortunately, with all the art that I've made, I've been able to share it at school, to work with different professors and researchers, and then get some of it published. And I even got um, the Be Conscious collection to go to the UK, because there was a professor who came over to um, UC Irvine and saw my art and wanted to bring it back. And yesterday, I just got an email from this other lady that they translated some of the poem into Italian. And then they also put some of the artwork into the Baltic Museum in UK. And believe it or not, they, they also have a problem with uh, immigration there because it's like people are constantly <laughs> gonna move from different places because of the history of globalization, imperialism and all this. And that's just what people do. We can't really stop flow of migration. So it is happening in a global scale. And this is not a problem that is only unique to the US, but you know, we all can solve it by just allowing it and understanding it. And I think that's why art and perspective and humanity is important for people to look beyond profit and to see people before profit. So none of this would have happened without community. It takes people who I knew around me, my coordinator to really appreciate my art, support me, and to kind of, you know, like agree to push me to keep doing it, to reflect us. She saw that my mental health also continues to get better as I make more and more art. And then that was also something I used to connect with other people to really be vulnerable and open up and have deeper conversation with other undocumented folks or to share about 
myself with people who have, I don't know, and to educate them about immigration. So in all on this slide, I'll just read this last thing I wrote. We are stronger together and we can find love, support, understanding, and peace in one another. So reach out to one another. I think y'all are in the same room, right? With all the undocumented folks watching. So once you turn around to uh, your left or right, I don't know how the room set up is, introduce yourself and then high five. I'll give y'all like a minute to do that. <laughs> just be like, hey, what's up? Here to stay undocumented and afraid, all this buzzword. I say all that, but you know I'm scared at times too. Everybody got a chance to high five and um yeah, I assume, you know, I know y'all just do 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 do, do whatever y'all do. Cool, cool, cool. But community is key, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Oh yeah, so it's a picture, all right, this is the whole idea of community is key. So, um, you know, we all went through all this, like, oh, we're gonna graduate, shit, um, schools, whatever, is so an institution, are we really learning? We still gotta move forward. Everything's happening crazy in the immigration world, like deportation, they just keep threatening DACA, it's still happening again. You know, like family, money situation, but at the end of the day, some of us have make it, some of us don't make it, but really I think we are just making it in our own journey. Everybody go at their own pace and we have one another to support. And at the end, we can just smile all together when throughout the way. And um, let me talk a little bit about artivism. Now that I just talk about where art is coming from, how it means and what it is. So for me, artivism is just using art to raise awareness, fundraise, uplift, reflect and connect. And then this artwork is um, it's done by Fabiana Rodriguez, another amazing artist. If y'all wanna check her out. So to show an example of how I use art as an artivism, I want to highlight this project I did with uh, Madeline Villanueva, where we call it Bowtie and Friends. And the whole point of the project was that in the past I found out that I'm one of the few API that keep sharing my story in public because the risk is there and then the AAPI movement, which is the Asian American Pacific Islander, we might be a little bit more shy away from putting ourselves out there because the movement is not as strong. And actually, I didn't find out that there were other undocumented AAPI folks until I was like 19 years old. So most of my life, I didn't know any other undocumented people but myself. But I know Thai people, there's a lot of undocumented people. It's like 50% of our population are pretty much undocumented, but they all just really work in. Um, in restaurant in different places where where people don't really come out. You know, they just kind of take conditions as conditions. And that's why it's, it's, it's important for us all to really come together and spread our truth because without acknowledging and knowing that there's a problem, we can never find solution. And that was also one of the reasons why it was so hard for me to find resources initially being an undocumented API, including scholarship and every other thing because a lot of things are skilled and made for land X folks because they have been mobilizing and moving forward. So out of that, I made um, a tarot card uh, set and then um, where I interviewed 16 undocumented API from across the nation. You know, we have folks from Philippines, Brunei, um, India, Thailand, Taiwan, uh, Marshall Island, um, yeah, in different places. Actually, you can find out about it later. And then we were trying to kind of dig deeper and talk about uh, our stories is not just one dimensional. It's not always just a story about, and this is how I got to college, or, and this is how I graduated college, or this is how I, you know, create my own business or whatever. But it's about like how we live every day being undocumented. I want to focus on embrace living undocumented because it is a long movement, a long fight. And right now we can only put our hopes and trust in each other while fighting for this bigger vision. And um, so within the project from the interview, uh, my friend Madeline, she wrote all the stories and I did the artwork and then we kind of just came up with a name and then do all that. So this is one of it, it's called a grower and it talks about all the names are under alias, by the way, to protect people's identity. So this is lavender milk tea uh, quote. 
and she talked about what her perspective of home is in terms of the Philippines. She said, I feel like I still call the Philippines home when I talk about it, but also I acknowledge that the way I remember it is different from what it is now. I look at it from a child's perspective, and so to me, it's very magical and nice. I love the valley, and this is the 818 San Fernando Valley, because <laughs> I know there's hella valleys in LA too. And so I consider that home also. My family definitely set our roots there. When I think of home as a people too, who makes me feel at home is where I feel accepted for who I am and helps me grow into my own. And I think it's interesting being a documented and an idea of home. And this is a little drawing that I accompany with it. And all these drawings are also made um, when I felt different things throughout my life. So some of it are made directly for the writing and some of it is just um drawings that i feel like it could be relate because this idea of this tarot card is not to tell a story but to tell a collective story a collective experience of undocumented experience and how we all share an essence and similar pain and struggle and goals and aspiration but you know the specificity and uniqueness is also within each of us and another one is um is about the resilience and it's about this person named Christmas Eve, who talk about going through his parents' deportation. And um, I could read it out too. Part of what got me through my parents' deportation case is having a support group of family and friends. Christmas Eve says, following the raid on his family's home, Eve and his brother, who is a US citizen, move in with their grandparents and uncle. His uncle has a disability that leaves him in a wheelchair but seeing him smile and going through life inspires Eve to keep at it. Having this family and his chosen family help carry him through his undocumented life, he recognizes the resilience of his immigrant community. We are all strong because we get strength from each other. And I thought that was amazing that he was able to have that. And I think that's so true that um, we are inspired by one another. And that's also the reason why we all need to keep moving forward for ourselves and for our community. And we have such a beautiful community, so might as well just highlight and put it out there. So this is what I meant by rewriting the narrative and really like empowering one another and show the world who we really are while addressing the problem of immigration. And this is the last one that I'm gonna show in this series. Uh, it's called The Mirror, and then this is, um, a drawing of my friend Soul Tree, actually. That's how she kind of looked like in terms of body frame, you know? <laughs> so, but you get it, it's, it's, it's art. So like, I had a bunch of little things to it. Um, and she was made, she's actually a musician and she was writing a song about Not One More, in terms of Not One More Deportation. And she gave this amazing quote about being undocumented and the idea and where it comes from. This supposed to be for her EP. So, you know, a quick shout out to her, Soul Tree. I think she got a song on YouTube. It's called Colloquial L Lullaby. Just put Soul Tree, S O U L T R E E. I don't know how to spell colloquial, but lullaby is L U L L A B Y. And it should come up with keywords. But it's pretty much this um, being undocumented challenges the idea of a nation state. Citizenship here only existed for 103 years in 1914. Being in this body of uh, an undocumented challenges, idea of border, paper to validate yourself to a land, owning land, and having limits to see their family in different land. We challenge that idea directly that only people with wealth and light skin could do that. By existing, we challenge that. We are an example of the dehumanizing experience. We experience in how policy is put before people. We are a mirror of that. You can't see undocumented. We are living and experiencing it and challenging all these ideas of how people move around from state to state. That is part of humanity you experience. It's not really much I could say from that. That was beautifully written and said. So I'll just let that sink in for a bit. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's recorded, so y'all can always come back and refer to it. Also, uh, we're gonna do a tour with it. Oh, so I have some videos for y'all to see other undocumented artists too. This is actually written by Sotri, the poem, and artwork is by Julio Salgado, and music by Jesus Iniguez.
Dear young brown displaced girl. Dear young brown displaced girl. Oh, sorry. This uh, the video uh, is actually. Um, I think the order got switched. This video is by Kemi. The poetry and then the uh, drawings by Julio Salgado. Tear down the wall you have built around your heart and cross the border back into yourself. You will not be stopped and frisked, questioned or profiled here as you explore the lonely desert of belly, the mountains of shoulder and the burdens they bear at their peaks, the slope of tongue, the valley between eyebrows that you store your worry in. You are one among a line of generational refugees, historical nomads still searching for the homes inside of ourselves. And in the dust, you write your story in the shapes of your footsteps and in the direction in which your heart beats. The start of this journey is not the first chapter of your story, nor the last. You are a book waiting to be read by those who will come after us. So leave them to the imprint of your fist in the appendix and the shadow of your smile in the glossary. They will weep as they read your table of contents and they will realize why you began with the end. You carry entire ecosystems in the folds of your fists. Store the heirloom seeds of your people between your knuckles to scatter along your journey, leaving a trail from origin to destination so that you may always find your way home in either direction. You are more than the pieces of paper that lay in tempting weight in front of you. But they will dangle out of your reach like carrots and brand you with like cattle. Learn to taste the stories hidden in the accent of your name. Do not let them colonize your tongue. Keep the foreign in your pronunciation and remember the spicy smell of where you come from. In this new land of 99 cent stores, only the emotional trauma is free. They will gift you fear. Do not take it. They will offer you shame. Never let your head drop in response. They will hate you. Do not let their anger fill your heart. They hate you simply because they know your power. Because they have been working to extinguish you for generations, yet the flames have never gone out. Your ancestors stoked the coals from their graves, and the legs of your people have buckled, but never fallen. For still, you rise. A new dawn will come, and again, and again, and again, you will rise with the sun. They are amazed you are still standing, still standing in line, standing up in the tension centers, though sometimes hanging at the end of a rope that held you too tight, standing in packed emergency rooms, though sometimes laid flat and still of breath, standing even though we are broken, though our hips moan from the strain of bearing the weight of our grandmothers and the burdens they bore on their backs, so standing to stretch backs, forever bent over in fields and factories, standing after we stoop to pick up our dignity again and again and again, still you will rise. And when you are tired of crossing borders, migrate to me. I will build a wall with my arms around the soft clouds of your waist and be your equator. When you are weary, you can rest in the hollow of my collarbone. I will find ways to distract your lips when your internalized depression is too bitter to swallow. I will wrap you in a sea of blankets when the blues come knocking at your door, tickle your toes when you are red with anger at the injustice of it all. I will fill you up with stories of our people when the fridge is full of only crumbs. And when you are tired of crossing borders, migrate to me. We will guard the sovereign land of our bodies by any means necessary. We will quench our thirst from the rivers of our bloodstreams and be filled. We will build homes within each other that need not be sanctioned by any state. We will install no-fly zones above our hearts so that hate never rains nor rains. Only the teardrops of our ancestors will fall from the sky and pitter-patter sweet melodies across our hip bones. The spirits of our grandfathers will dance with joy at our union, will forgive us for sending only the ghosts of ourselves to stand by their deathbeds while we mourn from oceans away. And when you are tired of crossing borders, migrate to me. We will not apologize for this pursuit of decolonial love. For as they lay claim to our land, we will reclaim our bodies. That was amazing. Um, so we only have like 12 minutes left and then I'll leave around like um, 10 minutes for Q&A. So 
right now, um, y'all could just do some free ride or free draw and then I'll take Q and A. And, um, but I'm gonna skip this slide because, okay. So one of the questions was, uh, can you put that up again? How do you deal with, how you do you personally deal with negative political rhetoric? Um, personally, personally, let's, like before dealing, when I first hear it, I just get mad. I just get sad. I'm like, yo, we deserve way better than this. I can't believe all these people talking smack. And, um, but how I deal with it is I talk to other people about it and I let that sink in. And one thing that I've been practicing very recently is uh, meditation. And it's just more so of like letting thoughts come to me, knowing how like my emotion works and how my mind works and how I feel all these feelings. But at the end of the day, understanding that sometimes I can't change these people for hating, but I can only learn how to react in a more positive manner. So like the other day, I just, I just got mad. So it just made me think like, okay, I'm gonna do some art, I'm gonna do some clothing, I'm gonna design some stuff and to spread my truth and spread how this is hurtful to our community and how it makes me feel. So that's kind of like how I deal with it. But it's not always like that. Sometimes I just, I just go kick with homies and try to escape those feelings. How can we encourage students to use art as a form of activism? Um, so one thing I did with the UCI students and um, all these folks is that we created uh, an undocumented art collective where we meet weekly. And then um, for all the organizers out there, it's, it's not that expensive at all to create this program. All you need is Costco pizza. If you need Costco card, you can hit me up. Um, and then you can just have paper and pen and all these things. So every week people come in and work on a project, right? Sometimes the project prolong and we have a theme question like home, mental health, what's happening politically. And first it comes from like reflecting and creating our truth. And then uh, from there, every quarter we had an art show where folks get to choose to display what they made. And they just talk about what they did. So that's one thing. And there's always like, protests and marches happening so y'all could always meet up and then create posters and that's another thing too or um another thing that we all could do is probably come up with some hashtags so just use existing hashtag and keep pushing out our reality and just hashtag it and docu resilience and docu joy and documented and afraid whatever it is so uh, opportunities for non-artists to get started doing art I don't think you need to be an artist to do art. I mean, I was not really an artist. Like, uh, I pretty much didn't do art at all until three, four years ago. Before that, I thought art was just, you know, like something people just write a bunch of random things, sign their name, and try to sell to bougie people and make money. I didn't really believe in art. <laughs> but um, I think we're all right, right? We all can reflect and we all can journal. I see that as art too. Like my poem is that doesn't really rhyme or whatever. It's just like combination of feelings. And as a kid, I think we all draw, but somewhere along the line, society judges us and we just starting judging ourselves based on our skill and don't let ourselves express freely without that judgment. So I think all that is art. Facebook posts is even art, if you want to put it that way. Who are other artists that inspire you that use artivism? I mean, like uh, Julio Salgado, Soul Tree. Okay, oh, other as in like other people, I guess. Um, so a lot of my inspiration is from music, actually. So one of my big inspiration when I was younger. Oh, I'm gonna put it on the slide too. So these are some resources there, but y'all can keep asking questions. Um, one of my first inspiration was Bob Marley, and. Um, it's because I watch this documentary on Netflix and I think Bob Marley is often associated with just like pop culture or marijuana. But when I watched the documentary, I was like, wow, he actually made a lot of songs and bring like Jamaica on this like international world and also kind of like to preach like a different way of living. And a lot of his song kind of like a redemption songs talk about like emancipating oneself from mental slavery and touches on real issues. So I thought like that was really powerful. And one of his songs, Zimbabwe, he actually used that to fund the revolution 
in Zimbabwe and One Love is made to kind of talk about like deep dividing politics in Jamaica. So him, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Joey Badass, I don't know, a lot of music for sure. And then artists like Banksy, Powell Kaczynski. And yeah, I think their artivism is opportunities for students to showcase art. That's why I say community. Community is key. Um, so right now, I'm pretty sure you can just bring it up to your community college coordinator, culture strike, maybe look up like undocumented art show, and then like just kind of keep your ear on it. Just be, um, I know one, one, one person who does a lot of showcase too, he's a poet, his name is Yosima Reyes. Y-O-S-I-M-A-R space R-E-Y-E-S. He once loaded me into an art show. But I'm also, I'll probably host some art shows too for undocumented folks. So my Instagram is at the bowtie. Just DM me or whatever. And then whenever I have a chance to do that, I'll do it. Right now, I moved to Chicago. I'm originally from LA, but I'm going to move back in January. But um, with the Undocumented Art Collective, my homie is, is organizing it. I'm not sure how it's going. I could reach out to him and kind of like, connect y'all. So as of now, I don't know where, but just keep your eye out, talk to the community members and bring that idea into your own like undocumented resource center if there's one. Would you be willing to come to our college to lead a workshop? For sure, like I love to. I mean, like I love to see y'all in person. Uh, look, y'all can even have my number. <laughs> Actually not, nah, it's recorded, so let's not do that. Uh, so, just email me and then, yeah, I mean, I love to. How do we educate community with art? Um, I mean, all the information is out there, right? Like, uh, I think infographic is also art and story is art and like things about the law. So one thing I like about art is like, it's never always just education from art, but it's just that a lot of times we see information like, boom, resource guide boom, political like news, op-ed, whatever. And for me, I don't like to read as much. English is my second language. So art kind of draws my attention. So it's, I think we can educate our community with art by either using art to draw people's attention or making it more accessible and concise that information into visual, video, or music. So it's just like spread around. That's kind of how I see it. Hold on, five minutes closing? Oh, <laughs> okay, so um, this is the end of the road. We can play some sad songs. Uh, Y'all like Anderson Pack? I don't even know. I'll just play some song to end this and then I'll talk in the background. Um, like this. <laughs> Okay, all jokes aside, um, the closing, I just gave you all the tools. It's very bigcartel.com. Fabiana told about it. Uh, you can list three items and you can make a store, right? So you can sell your art, sell clothes, sell anything. Instagram is dope to promote art, promote product, promote vision. I know social media is like, ugh, it harms mental health. It's like filled with fake people, but it's cool. Comedy is also a nice portfolio to like, um, to like showcase whatever you want to showcase, but it's limited on based on clicks. So you can like only like make 15 moves or something like that and you can't move it no more. And I'm actually working with um, me and my homies, some are undocumented, some are citizen. We actually won a business competition at UCI and we got 10K. So we're making our, our platform called Penny. Penny. So like that um, college students and like young folks could sell their art, you know, and then, um, and then, you know, I'm just thinking of a way to create opportunities for undocumented folks. So definitely stay tuned with that. And we're also going to be having art show. And one of my role in that project is working with artists, recruiting undocumented artists, because that's what I want to do. And also like visioning how the user interface will be and also like finding place that will host shows. Oh, um, Back onto that question of how can people showcase their art, use open, uh, open mic. Open mic is dope. That's what I usually go to. Open mics is open mics around the area, you know, when people have it. And um, if y'all want, 
I don't have that many IG followers, but I could put all your art on my Instagram and be like, hey, go check this person out, go check that person out. So please utilize like, uh, utilize me, I guess. It, it sounds kind of weird, um, but I think, yeah. And uh, the boat at gmail.com. So I have two minutes to say goodbye. I would just say thank you so much for attending this workshop webinar. This is one of my, this is pretty much the first webinar I've ever done on autism. I did no workshop before, so I was very nervous. I hope y'all love it. Um, for all the artwork that y'all did and like the writing that you did, I would love for y'all to just like, you know, email me those or like send and uh, DM it to me on, G, on, on, on Instagram. And I would love to kind of like, you know, shout y'all out and kind of see what y'all did. Like, I would love to connect. Don't be shy to connect at all. Like, I just love connecting with folks. And, um, and yeah, I hope y'all start doing art. And then if y'all ever have any idea, just hit me up. You know, y'all can always create anthologies and stories just by using art. Another thing is fundraising. What I do sometimes is I donate my art to, uh, like, to different organizations and nonprofit that I can't... I don't know if I could cuss here, but that I fuck with, <laughs> with their vision. And like, um, you know, it's just kind of like when people donate a certain amount, I was like, oh, just give them the art. So that's an incentive. So um, there's a lot that can be done with art. And I think, you know, it's important right now we need everybody in the movement. We need everybody to support each other. But it's important to take care of oneself and to do it in a way that we all enjoy. It. And for me, it's like I'm organizing, but I also love to use art as a tool because that's how I kind of flow. And I think that's the end of it. It's been one hour. Thank you, y'all, for the time. Y'all could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me right now. It's cliche, but I'm going to end it on a good note. At the bow tie. Reach out. I love y'all. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. Peace. <laughs>